somebody here goes, if everyone stayed at the same level forever, Swerve never wins the AW title and Roddy never wins the international title. Hold on a second. Well. Swerve has the AW world title around his waist. Where is he? Okay, imagine nobody has a belt. Where is Swerve now compared to where he was before he won the title? He's in the exact same spot. Mm -hmm. He's feuding with Christian, whose claim to a championship match is, I don't even know. He's coming off a loss in his last match for a title. He vanished, and he came back and put himself in the title picture with some explanation about how we used to team or something like that. And it's not the main event of the pay-per-view. It's an underneath match. In Everett, he was over, which he was before. He had a great match, which he had before. And the match was, he went 50-50 with Brian Cage for 20 minutes. If you take the belts off everybody, where is Swerve now compared to... He's in the exact same spot. If you take the belts off everybody, where is Roderick Strong now compared to was he where he was before? He's in the exact same spot. He's got his mustache. He's got his glasses. We almost never see him wrestle. He's doing commentary. And he's got a, a match coming up with Will Ospreay in the middle of the card. For a mid-card belt, but that has been a mid-card belt. When you have 18 belts, when you have five singles championships on a single show, I mentioned this the other day, I went to uh, Dynamite with my buddy Bo, knows zilch about wrestling. I don't think he's watched wrestling since like the, the Monday Night Wars, but he does jiu-jitsu with me. A science experiment? No, he does jiu-jitsu with me, and I was like, I'm going to the show, you want to go? Rob's going to be there, and you know, he goes, sure. And we have another buddy who trains. Neve and he, I, I invited him, and I was like, hey, we're all going. You want to go? He says, sure. So he went. Okay? Had a great time. Like I said, I had a great time. Okay? But the show's over. We leave. Start heading to the car. And he doesn't ask me one question about any of the characters or any of the storylines He's not like, hey, you know, what, what's the deal with, uh, you know, those guys that are in charge or what? Nothing. He doesn't ask anything. We just start talking about other things. He's got other things he wants to talk about. But then he does bring up one question, and he, he just stops me and he goes, "Let me." I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> we had three title matches on that show. I said, yes, there were, there were three championship matches on the show. He goes, that's kind of a lot, isn't it? I said, dude, there's like 18 belts. He went, what? I said, yes. That was the one takeaway that he got. So the point is, when you have all of these belts, and everybody has a belt, but whether they have a belt or not, they're still slotted in the exact same spot. It doesn't matter. If Swerve won the title, and you put him against Will Ospreay at double or nothing for the title in the main event, now we're talking. Final match on the show, now we're talking. If his angle was closing out every single show, it was the main event segment. He opened the show doing a main event segment. He closed the show doing a main event segment. The show was built around the guy. That's something. Just putting the belt around his waist and leaving him in the exact same spot means nothing. Mm. Orange you know Cassidy's in the exact same spot. Trent is in the exact same spot. I could go up and down the roster. Your Anna Jays. Remember Anna Jay when she was first starting out? Man, few years. It's same broken record. She's in the exact same spot. So that's a problem. Even worse than that are people that go for titles and end up in a much worse spot, like possibly Deanna Perrazzo and maybe Serena Deeb, the way this thing is going, because she had a match against Anna Jay, the person you just mentioned, and... It was a good match for Anna Jay. It was a good match, actually, period. But why did he go for so long if you're trying to get Deeb over as this baby face? And why would it be against Anna Jay? And why would you give Anna Jay a baby face comeback coming out of the break? And why does Tony then steal the flag and do a strip tease behind it as Serena goes running up the ramp and they'd hold on the shot for too long and she looks like a schmuck? Like, I don't get it. 
I don't get what they're doing. I don't get what they're doing with a lot of the show. And Pac Pack actually said something during his promo. Yes, he did. That was that was make me feel something. And AEW doesn't make people feel a whole lot. And at some point, MJF is going to come back, and that is going to be great. I don't know right now. I mean, there's things that they can do, but boy, you need some jolts to start happening here. And Will Osprey can be a jolt, but not necessarily how they're using him. And you kick off a show like that where Roderick Strong never put him on commentary again. I actually I, like Roderick Strong on commentary. You, look, I like personally he's Roderick Strong. He's such a jerk. But the thing is, he's he's a comedic mid-card douche. And you talk about like what did, at the end of the day, the devil storyline do for anybody. It didn't do anything for anybody. Because there was a little bit there with Strong, Taven, and Bennett. And they've just been bumble putzes ever since so i i that whole thing i thought was terrible the beretta cassidy feud i'm sure there's somebody out there who's deep into it and they love it i mean look at the post and just let me skip to the end because and then i'll shut up about it the post-match beatdown that went on for a long time with lance archer and uh vinny and and dude beaten down I, Brian Danielson and FTR. Why were the Young Bucks and Jack Perry not there to conduct that whole thing? Instead, it's just a long beatdown, and then all of a sudden we get Daniel Garcia running out there. And it's like, I don't know. I don't know how they go about doing things or whatever. Maybe these, all of these plans ought to not be so top secret and they might want to run through some filters and put some new eyes on it because a lot of what they do does not make sense and it's not very intriguing right now not to me yeah i got a couple people here well we should declare aw no we should not declare aw dead see there and in the, fact well hold there's on the biggest here's uh, here's my thing listen if aw were doomed like mm. who cares it's done yeah. okay the point is they're not. No. The point is they have an incredible roster. They're going to make a lot of money soon. They have an incredible roster. Mm -hmm. They're probably going to get a, a greatly improved television deal, yes. or at least better. They're not you know? going anywhere. Nobody's saying it. I'd say 50% increase, maybe. You know, it's about what WWE doesn't got. doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter. It does matter, it's... actually. Some people are expecting know, double or more, but it's going to be better. But here's the point. Bottom line is it ain't going nowhere. The point is... It's frustrating because you have everything that you could possibly need mm -hmm. to have a great promotion doing significantly better than it's doing right now. And so it's frustrating when you have all of these pieces, you have an entire puzzle in front of you, a giant, beautiful, colorful puzzle, and you can't put the pieces together in a meaningful way. That's what frustrates me. I wouldn't care. If it were sunk, who cares? The point is it's not. There was a period where WCW was like so far gone. It was like all you can do is laugh at it, make fun of it. But you can't care that much because it's doomed. It is absolutely doomed. AW is nowhere near absolutely doomed. They're not doomed at all. What it is is a whole bunch of wasted potential, which is irritating. And it's yeah. it, like it's not a lot of solutions that are difficult. It's not like if you're if you're poor, let's say you make ten thousand dollars a year, and you've got some issue, and it's like you know what would solve this problem? If I had thirty million dollars, okay, well, brother, you're 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 toast, okay? But if you make a hundred thousand a year, and to put your kids through college, you need one hundred ten thousand a year. Well, if there was something you could do to make ten thousand easily, and you weren't doing it, it'd be frustrating. Just do it. Right? Get out there on This that is not corner, out Tony. of the realm of possibility. No. These are not difficult fixes. No. You're more upset about it than I am. I mean, it's frustrating, but it's one of those things where I've been reviewing wrestling for long before AEW came along, and there is plenty out there to discuss if they somehow just poof went away, which absolutely is not going to happen. And people that take all of that and go... 
oh my God, the downfall of AEW, or when you talk about the rating last week, which was terrible by any metric. I don't care if you put the playoffs in there. They had not drawn under 300,000 people since like July of 2021. I mean, it's not, it, it, things aren't humming right now. And they're not exciting creatively. And it's not, oh, WWE this, or it's, you know, people's bad feelings. That's what it is. Oh, it's something online. No, they're just not clicking right now. And there have been plenty of times when they do. And guess what? When it comes to Double or Nothing, when the pay-per-view happens, just like almost every single pay-per-view they had, regardless of any of this buildup we're talking about, it's probably going to be a kick-ass show and worth the money because those always are. But the fact of the matter is, from week to week, this is a tough show to watch. It's a tough show to get into, and it's a tough show when people leave it to then get back into it, and that's a problem. All right, one last thing before we go on to the next topic. Yes, sir. Bakersfield, as of Friday, according to Russell Ticks, 1,500 tickets. Could have did 5,000 in effort if you would have advertised Swerve and Nick Wayne. I don't know about that, but it would have been better. (laughs) And uh, we've also got uh, Double or Nothing, which, you know, in years past, you know, this is a great example. Years past, Double or Nothing, sold out. Boom. 6,400 tickets right now. I mean... Set up for 7,000 and the MGM Grand Garden Arena. And let me tell you something. MGM holds more than 7,000, yeah. like significantly more. Yes. You could double that easy, but they're at 6,400. And, uh, you know, I don't care what anyone says about me, what I'm saying, whatever. They do double or nothing in Vegas every year. And this year, 6,400. That's not basketball. That's not whatever. That's significantly declined interest from your hardcore traveling fan base so thank you for watching make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again